All right, so let's go ahead and do one more example here. Um, and I had sort of left out a step before because we didn't need it. And it does make problems a little bit trickier. So I do want to warn you right now, completing the square is not always going to be an efficient way of solving these problems. We're going to get to a, a better way, but I need to show you why it's true that the thing works that we're going to eventually get to. But you also do need to be aware of this completing the square process because we can use completing the square in lots of other areas of math, not just for solving quadratic equations. So remember, this is a process. It's not just a method for solving equations. So the first step that we always do with completing the square is to move the constant to the other side. So we have 2x squared minus 8x equals negative 3 in this case. But if we remember the whole magic number idea of taking your middle coefficient, dividing by 2, and squaring it, that was predicated on the fact that our first term was 1x squared. So we use that in that calculation. So this time when we don't have 1x squared, we're like, uh-oh, problem. So let's not make it a problem. If you have a coefficient in front of your x squared, get rid of it. So we can do that. In our second step, we can say divide both sides of the equation by 2. So divide by whatever your coefficient is. That way we end up with just an x squared up front. Now we use our magic number idea. So our magic number in this case is to take our middle coefficient of negative 4, divide by 2, and then square it. That gets us negative 2 squared, or 4. So if I add this to both sides, I'm adding negative 2 squared, or 4. So once I factor the left-hand side, it factors as x minus 2 squared. Now on the right hand side, let's do some scrap work over here. We have negative 3 halves plus 4. 4 would be 8 halves. So negative 3 plus 8 is 5. So now using the square root property, we get x minus 2 equals the positive or negative square root of 5 halves. We can add the 2 to the other side to get 2 plus or minus the square root of 5 halves. But guess what? I'm not going to allow you to leave your answer like that. Because we have a square root of a fraction. We learned last unit that we need to rationalize denominators. So we can't have the square root of 2 in the bottom. And so instead, we need to rationalize by multiplying by root 2 over root 2. So we got 2 plus or minus the square root of 10 on the top and 2 on the bottom. And in our homework system, we would say 2 plus or minus root 10 over, or not plus minus, sorry. We're going to have plus and then 2 minus root 10 over 2 in the homework system. But again, we need to rationalize denominators if you have a radical in the bottom. Hopefully you're seeing at this point that your work with radicals is not going away. you got to know how to simplify a radical. you got to know how to deal with the square root of a negative. got to know how to rationalize. All this stuff's going to keep coming up.